Hey guys, how's it going? Hope you're having a wonderful week. Like always, today I am continuing with my Celine Dion discography journey, and we've made it to her 10th studio album from 2007 called Taking Chances. Now, this album was a big deal for Celine because it was her return to the music scene after almost five years of performing A New Day in Las Vegas. So her Las Vegas residency lasted five years, and this was her big return to the music scene. And then in 2008, Celine embarked on the year-long Taking Chances world tour, which visited five continents and became one of the highest grossing tours of all time. Now, when it comes to the 2000s decade, her Taking Chances world tour was the sixth highest grossing tour of that decade. Now, I am looking at the track list and I'm listening to the deluxe version of Taking Chances and there are 17 tracks on the deluxe version and the album is 1 hour and 10 minutes. And out of all 17 songs, I do believe that the only song I've heard so far is track number 1, Taking Chances. And all the other songs are brand new to me, but like always, if I start listening to a song and it sounds familiar, I'll let you guys know. Now, we did kick off this video with track number 1, Taking Chances, which was obviously the lead single from the album. And... This is a great Celine Dion song. I remember listening to it all the time when it came out back in 2007. And it's catchy as hell. I love the melody. I love the instruments and the production. Her voice is great as well. I love the climax of the song. And in my opinion, this is a strong Celine Dion song. I also love the meaning behind the lyrics, Taking Chances. Um, it's a great message. Now, when she's singing about taking chances in the song, as I read the lyrics, I do believe she's singing about a relationship. She's singing about taking chances within a relationship. But in general, this song could relate to anything in anybody's life when it comes to taking chances. Just your everyday life, whether it be a career, a job, a relationship like she's singing about in the song. Anything that requires you taking a chance, this song could be very relatable. So talk to me, talk to me like lovers do. Walk with me, walk with me like lovers do. What do you say to taking chances? What do you say to jumping off the edge? Never knowing if there's solid ground below or a hand to hold or hell to pay. What do you say? And then she also starts the song and wraps up the song by saying, don't know much about your life. And I don't know much about your world, but she's taking a chance on this person. She's taking a chance on this person, and I imagine that this person is taking a chance on her, and they're kind of jumping over the edge, and they don't know what's going to happen, whether there's solid ground below, hell to pay, or bliss and happiness. I mean, I've taken many chances in my life, not knowing the outcome, not knowing what's going to happen, and sometimes it didn't work out, unfortunately. But other times it did, and there are times where you just need to take that chance because I never want to live my life thinking, what if? What if I tried? What if I took that chance? Maybe it would have worked out, maybe it didn't, but I never want to live my life with the what ifs. I always want to take that chance because there's always the chance. No matter how small, there's always the possibility it could work out. Now it does say here that the two writers of the song, Cara Diaguardi and Dave Stewart, actually played the song for Celine's husband, Rene. And when Rene listened to it, he absolutely fell in love with it. And then Celine recorded it. This is definitely a Celine Dion song I always go back to. Anyway, let's move on to track number two, Alone. Well, thank God that's over. <laughs> that's horrible to say. That's really horrible to say, but um, that was track number two alone, and I just, I couldn't. 
I couldn't. Um, it's it sounds like Celine was singing karaoke. It sounds like something you'd hear on American Idol. I don't know. It just to me, this track just wasn't very good. I love the original version of the song performed by Heart from the 1980s. But Celine's version, it was, in my opinion, it was very boring. And it didn't pack near as much punch as the Heart version. And I, I don't know why she covered this song. I can see why she covered it because it's a great song. Lyrically, it does sound like a Celine Dion song. And it does fit in with the overall theme of a Celine Dion album. And then she goes on to say, Alone, till now I always got by on my own. I never really cared until I met you. And now it chills me to the bone. How do I get you alone? So this does continue the theme of the album lyrically from track number one, Taking Chances, how she's singing about this relationship and she loves this person, she wants to be around this person. Really? I'm actually reading here that um, the heart version of the song isn't the original version, which is what I initially thought. I always thought that Alone was an original heart song and it's not. It says here that the song was originally composed by Billy Steinberg and Tom Kelly, who recorded it under the name I-10 on their 1983 album, Taking a Cold Look. Oh. And then it says American rock band Heart covered it on their 1987 album, Bad Animals. Oh, oh, okay. Okay. I mean, this is one of the reasons why I love doing these videos, because I always do a little bit of research in these videos, and I always discover something new in one of these videos. Now, it does say here that Alone was released as the fourth single from Taking Chances, and I don't know, maybe there are some of you watching right now who love Celine's rendition of the song, but to me... It wasn't anything special, and I definitely wouldn't listen to it again. But anyway, we're gonna move on to track number three, Eyes on Me. Very psychedelic. <laughs> Okay, that was track number three, Eyes On Me, and I'm struggling with this album already, and we're only three tracks in. Um, there was nothing memorable about this song. I, I was just bored. In my opinion, it does sound like a filler track, and there's something very uninspired about it. It sounds very lazy and uninterested, and um, it just didn't grab me. I definitely wouldn't listen to it again. I do want to talk about the lyrics, but honestly, I don't even care about the lyrics. She's saying, I know that once in love, you don't think of the devil who's inside and maybe it'll come one day when you'll feel safe and I won't have the time to hear what you want to hear, blah, blah, blah. We both want to make it last. So keep your eyes on me, your eyes on me. It's not an illusion that you're the one, so whatever. It does continue the theme of the album. It sounds like a Celine Dion song lyrically, but... I, I didn't like this song at all. I will say though, just like track number two alone, I did like the production of the track. I thought it was really interesting and it was nice to listen to, but the production alone isn't enough for me to want to listen to the song again because I didn't like the melody. I didn't like how she sang the song and overall, it's just not a memorable song in my opinion. I'm really hoping this wasn't a single and... It was. It was the second single, which... Why? Why was this a single? Why was it the second single? It was the single that followed up Taking Chances, which is a great song. It's a great lead single. And then we get a song like Eyes On Me. Now, I might be overreacting. Maybe a lot of you like this song. I really do apologize. Actually, I don't apologize because I just, I don't like the song. However, I will say I do like how this album is more rock influenced. Selena has played around with rock before on a lot of her other albums. So I do like it when Selena goes down 
the rock road, the soft rock road, and she plays around with drums and the electric guitar. It's more of a rebellious sound. But anyway, we are going to move on to track number four, My Love. Alrighty, that was track number four, My Love, and out of the last three songs I've listened to, Alone, Eyes on Me, and My Love, this one is probably my favorite, um, but that's not saying much because I still probably wouldn't listen to the song again. I really do like the acoustic guitar on this song, not just this song, but the album in general, as well as track number one, Taking Chances. Um, but once again, I just, I found this song really boring. I do like the lyrics of the song, but I stand tall to get by no matter how hard I try to hide. Did you know I take the time for you? Did you know that I would see you through? My love, can you give me strength? Somehow I forgot how to ease my pain, so. I like the song lyrically, it's a very classic sounding Celine Dion song. But I don't know, I definitely wouldn't listen to the song again, I found it boring and her voice isn't memorable on this song. I find in general her voice isn't very memorable on this album so far, with the exception of track number one, Taking Chances. I mean, I thought I was born listening to Miracle, which I kind of was, um, but that's a lullaby album. It's supposed to be soft and tender, but this album is boring for the wrong reasons, in my opinion. Other than that, I don't really have much to say about the song. It was written by Linda Perry, so that's probably why I enjoyed the lyrics so much. But that's all I really have to say about the song, so we're going to move on to track number five, Shadow of Love. Alrighty, that was track number five, Shadow of Love. Yay, finally! A song I actually really enjoy. You know what? I would listen to this song again. Um, you could tell that she was inspired by 80s rock for this album. This does sound like a female 80s rock song um, that we would maybe hear from Out of Heart or even Cher. Um, I liked it. Now, I haven't listened to a Heart album before, so... When I say that this sounds like a hard song, or it could have been a hard song, I'm just basing that on the, the songs I have heard from Heart, more so their more popular songs like Alone. And when it comes to the lyrics, once again, it's just a very standard Celine Dion song lyrically. I almost don't even want to talk about the lyrics. She said, I live my life like a runaway. I hide my dreams in a special place. I'm waiting here for my prince to come to save me from the darkness. I count the nights. I count the days. So the lyrics are a little cliche sounding in my opinion um so there's really nothing new lyrically when it comes to this album i just i find these songs are just very standard sounding celine dion songs lyrically and i just don't find myself as interested or invested with the lyrics on this album as i was a lot of her prior albums but anyway let's move on to track number six surprise surprise
Okay, that was track number six, surprise, surprise. And this was a nice power ballad from Celine Dion. It's very classic sounding. It sounds like a classic Celine Dion power ballad. It's also something very fresh and modern about it. So it doesn't sound like a Celine Dion power ballad from the 90s. It definitely does sound like a Celine Dion power ballad from the late 2000s, 2007. She definitely brought the vocals on this track as well, and I liked the chorus of the song. Um, even though I really enjoyed this song, again, I'm just, I'm struggling with this album because even though I did like this song, it's still not a song I would really listen to again. I don't know if it's because I'm getting to the point now where... Perhaps I'm getting bored of her songs and her discography. I don't know, but it just seems like I've heard something like this before from Celine. Even though I feel like she's more inspired by 80s rock on this album, and she is playing around with the acoustic guitar a bit more, and it's more rock sounding. At the same time, I feel like it still sounds like a Celine Dion album, which isn't a bad thing but also is a bad thing because it just sounds very ordinary. And this also goes back to track number five, Shadow of Love. I did like the track Shadow of Love, but again, I don't know if that's a song I would listen to all the time. I don't even know after this video if I would go back to the song, even though I did enjoy it because in my opinion, there are a lot better Celine Dion albums that she's already released prior to Taking Chances. And in my opinion, this is one of her weakest albums, and I'm only six tracks in. I mean, we do have quite a few songs left on the album, but so far, I do feel like that this is one of her weakest albums, if not perhaps her weakest album. There's just nothing about this album that really stands out to me, and it's just very bland sounding. But anyway, let's move on to track number seven this time. So I'm scared of his return that I can't sleep tonight. Cause this time is the last time I know that my eyes have seen too much. But this time, he all lies, I'm not in I do like that part. Okay, that was track number seven this time, and I am struggling with this album. I really am. My favorite part of this song was the... I, I failed that. Anyway, I did like the melody to an extent. I mean, it's a decent song, don't get me wrong, but... I'm just, I'm bored with this album. I will say though, I do feel like she might have taken a chance by creating and crafting a different sounding album, the more rock influenced sound of the album, but it's just not really resonating with me, unfortunately. In the song, she is saying, one more hour burns, so scared of his return that I can't sleep tonight in this hospital light. What you call a tragedy is just another day to me. For my heart beats with fear as his footsteps draw near. I mean, this, this is very suspenseful. It's almost like a thriller. The life I meant to lead won't slip away from me, because this time is the last time. I know that my eyes have seen it too much. This nightmare is not fair, and I've had enough. So it looks like she is over in this relationship. This person brings fear and turmoil into her life. You call this love? You just say you're sorry, and you call this love. Um, so she's fed up with this relationship, and this song is quite different from the rest of the album lyrically. Um, whereas in the other songs, she's singing about this person, she's in love, she wants to be with this person. But now she's saying that she's fed up, she wants to move on, it's toxic, it's poison. So lyrically, this is another song that I enjoyed, but that's not enough for me to recommend the song or to listen to it again. But anyway, let's move on to track number 8, New Dawn.
Yeah. Okay, that was track number eight, New Dawn. Yes! I am in love with this song. Hands down, one of the strongest songs on the album alongside Taking Chances, track number one. And I absolutely adore the song. I loved everything about it. Her vocals, it was so soulful. Um, and it was reminding me of 70s rock and... Just the overall production was just a joy to listen to. I absolutely loved the production on this track. Honestly, this is a song I would definitely listen to again. I almost want to listen to it again right now. I don't know if I'm overreacting when it comes to my praise for this song, but it's definitely 100% one of the best songs on the album, and I love it. She is singing about... um. It will be his hand that guides you. So she's actually singing about Jesus in the song. She does open up the song by saying, Jesus, I will follow you. So it is a very, um, uh, it's a very faith-based song. And she's saying, a new day will come. I know it will. You carry on. I know, I know. New day will dawn. Yes, it will. I am woman. A mountain I will climb. Oh, yes, I will. So... Lyrically, I mean, lyrically, this is also one of the strongest songs on the album. I honestly feel like this might even be one of the best songs she's released in the 2000s decade, the 21st century. Now, I definitely might be overreacting, but I adore this song so much. And the song was also written by Linda Perry, so... This song gets two big thumbs up for me, so let's move on to track number nine, A Song For You. Okay, that was track number nine, A Song For You, and this was another song I really, really, really enjoyed. I love the piano and the violin. You hear a lot of different instruments on this track. The piano, violin, I think you even hear the trumpet towards the end. Um, uh, it's very classical sounding, and there's something very mournful about it as well. She is saying, I couldn't live, I couldn't live without your love for one kiss. Will I give everything up? There's no words I can describe what I feel deep inside, so I let this song say it all. Just like track number 8, New Dawn, I do feel like this is one of the highlights from the album, and I would definitely listen to it again. Um, I mean, so far, 2 for 2, track number 8 and 9 were really good, so 2 thumbs up for those 2 tracks. So now we're gonna move on to track number 10, A World to Believe In. Okay, that was track number 10, A World to Believe In, and let me tell you, this album is making a comeback for me because I've loved the last three songs I've listened to, track number 8, 9, and 10, New Dawn, A Song For You, and now A World to Believe In. A World to Believe In is definitely a song I would listen to again. 
Um, I didn't like it as much as tracks number eight and nine, but I still really enjoyed it. And after doing this video, I would listen to the song again. She said, I see the tears and the heartache, and I feel the pain. I see the hatred in so many lives and lost in vain. And yet through this darkness, there's always a light that shines through and takes me back home. So this song does take me back to her album, A New Day Has Come, where she was singing about a new dawn, a new beginning. The clouds were parting and the sun was shining through and she was being awakened, a new purpose. Um, so I am getting a New Day Has Come vibes from this uh, song, not just this song, but I was also getting a New Day Has Come vibes from track number eight as well, New Dawn. Now this song was very popular in Japan because it was covered by Yuna Ito and Celine herself was so impressed by... Yuna Ito's cover of My Heart Will Go On that Celine decided to do a duet with her for this song, A World to Believe In. Lyrically, this song is very powerful to read and listen to. So once again, this song gets two thumbs up from me. Anyway, let's move on to track number 11, Can't Fight the Feeling. Yeah. Ooh. Okay, that was track number 11, Can't Fight the Feeling, Rock and Roll, Celine Dion. Definitely the most fun I've had so far listening to this album, but track number 11, Can't Fight the Feeling, and I liked it. It's a great time. It's a party song, and it gets your body moving. It put a smile on my face, and you know what? I enjoyed it. Let me tell you, there's no better guy. This is how it makes me feel inside. I want to dance. I want to play. Well, can you hear my heartbeat? Boom, boom. A million miles away. He won't stop till I drop. <laughs> I feel so energized now. It's, I think, because I've enjoyed the last four songs on the album, and I was just getting so bored with the first half of this album. Let's just not talk about the first half of this album. Let's just talk about the second half because the second half is giving me life. So overall, this was a great song. I'll listen to it again. So once again, two thumbs up. So let's move on to track number 12, I Got Nothing Left. Her voice sounds very strange on the song. What is wrong with her voice on this song? Okay, that was track number 12, I Got Nothing Left, and I really enjoyed this song, but what ruined it for me was Celine's voice, because there was something off about her voice. It was very high-pitched, in particular during the chorus, and I don't know if there was some wonky attitude happening, but I was getting Elvin and the Chipmunks vibe from her voice. It was very high-pitched. There were times where it didn't even sound like her. I don't know if I'm the only one or if I'm hearing things, but... There was just something incredibly off with her voice on this track, and that's what ruined it for me. It was almost unbearable at times. So if it wasn't for the way her voice was on this track, I would have really liked it, just like the last four tracks I listened to, but I can't really bring myself to listen to the song again, which is really unfortunate because I did like it. I liked the melody, I really liked the production. 
Um, it was soulful. I don't know, listen to the song, maybe I'm just hearing things, but it was just very odd. She does say in the song, anybody ever tell you that you're not cool? Hollow shell of man without a soul. Never ever felt your warmth because you're always cold. Only thing that makes sense is letting go. And then she goes on to say, because I got nothing left, I got nothing left, I got nothing left. I gave you my best and you treated it worthless. So this is another sad, depressing song when you read the lyrics, just like track number seven this time. But anyway, let's move on to track number 13, right next to the right one. Okay, that was track number 13, right next to the right one, and this is definitely a unique sounding Celine Dion song. I really liked it. It's, um, there's something very classical about it. And when I say classical, I mean it's kind of taking me back to albums I've listened to from the 50s. In particular, it was kind of reminding me of Cher's first two albums, All I Really Want to Do, and the sunny side share just the production of those two albums were reminding me of the production on this track it was kind of folk sounding it was like sitting around a campfire and it was really nice it was very chill and it was cool i liked it the more i listened to this album the more i realized that she definitely did take a chance with the sound of this album because it does sound like a Celine Dion album that we haven't heard before. It's much different from the rest of her catalog of music, and I like it. I really do like the more rock-influenced sounds on this album. You could tell that she was influenced by music from the 80s and 70s, maybe even 50s. The whole history of rock and roll, I imagine she was influenced by. Because you're the fire, you're the one, but you will never see the sun. If you don't know, you're right next to the right one. And I could call it many names, but it's myself I need to blame. I'm also really enjoying the lyrics on this second half of the album. I find the lyrics on this album to be hit or miss. But anyway, let's move on to track number 14, Fade Away. Okay, that was track number 14, Fade Away, and I thought this was a great pop rock song. It was kind of reminding me of Kelly Clarkson, Breakaway, her Breakaway album. Um, from what I remember, I mean, I haven't listened to Breakaway by Kelly Clarkson in many, many years, but from what I remember, it's a very pop rock sounding album. I really do need to go on my Kelly Clarkson discography journey, don't I? Um, but this was reminding me of what maybe Kelly Clarkson would have released. Um, and I liked it. I learned from the past that everything lasts. I understand that now everything changed when you walked away, but I'll survive somehow. I do feel like Celine's lyrics can get a bit repetitive from time to time. I mean, these are lyrics we've heard from her many times already, so 
There are times where I'm not even interested in talking about the lyrics because it's kind of the same old, same old. She's saying, once touched by pain, you're not the same, but time can heal your heart again, so let the clouds that bring you down just fade away, so... I like the meaning behind the song, so let's move on to track number 15, that's just the woman in me. God, I never thought that I would bring out the spritzer bottle during my first listen to Taking Chances. Um, her voice, her vocals on this track. Now, I don't know if I'm overreacting, but her voice on here is unlike anything I've heard before from Celine. The raspiness and, like, I don't want to compare the two because obviously they're very different. But, like, I was getting Janice Joplin vibes from her vocals on this track. You could tell, I mean, this is a song you could tell I was influenced, you know, from, I don't know, the 60s or 70s. Um, I liked it. I would, initially when I first started listening to the song, I was like, I like the song, it's probably not a song I'll listen to again, but after finishing the song, I would definitely listen to it again, just for her vocals alone. I think they're great. I hope I'm not overreacting when it comes to my love for this song, but... It's great. You know what? I'm kind of falling in love with this album now. I kind of am. In particular, the second half. I'm liking it. I'm really enjoying it. So now we're gonna move on to track number 16, Skies of L.A. Okay, now it's track number 16, Skies of LA, and I don't know how I feel about this song. It was pleasant to listen to. I enjoyed the production. I liked her voice on this track, but I didn't think it was very memorable. It's so sad what we have become. Beautiful days we seem to leave so undone. And I don't know where we will go from here. And then she goes on to say, after all, we're so bright. I don't know if tomorrow has a day. I don't know if the rays will shine my way again. All I know is that I'm standing in a place where my future looks like the skies of LA. So I really like the lyrics, but when it comes to the melody, and just the overall song, I probably wouldn't really listen to it again. There is a song that I really enjoy by her where she does sing about LA, and that's a song from her The Color of My Love album called I Remember LA, which is one of my favorite tracks from her The Color of My Love album. I always listen to it. But anyway, we have come to the end of the album, track number 17, Map to My Heart. Ooh. 
Okay, that was track number 17, Back to My Heart. And Rock and Roll is Celine Dion. I mean, I love the production on this track. I love the electric guitars. And I generally like classic rock music. So I can appreciate the production on not just this song, but the entire album. But this probably wouldn't really be a song I would listen to again. I also didn't really care for the lyrics on this song. She said, White chocolate kisses under the stars, riding on horses, boys with guitars. And she said, Give me a reason to dance in the dark. Be there to catch me and I'll fall apart. If you want to know how to get to me, follow the map to my heart. I don't know, in my opinion, these sound like lyrics that we hear from a teen pop star. Um... So obviously I didn't really like the lyrics, but I did like the production. So that was all 17 tracks of Taking Chances by Celine Dion, and I ended up enjoying myself, but it took a while to get there, and I was very nervous because I didn't know what to make of the album during the first half of the album, and looking back, I mean, obviously I have to listen to this album again, but my first impression of the album is that the first half isn't very good. It's very commercial sounding, it's not memorable, and I just flat out didn't like it. And the album, in my opinion, didn't start getting good until track number eight, New Dawn, and then A Song For You, A World To Believe In, and so on and so forth. So I adore the second half of the album. Now, if the first half of the album sounded a lot more like the second half, I probably would have overall enjoyed this album a lot more. And she definitely did take a chance with the sound of this album. It was definitely heavily influenced by 80s and 70s rock, even as far back as the 50s, perhaps. Um, uh, rock and roll, Celine Dion, the electric guitar, and there was a lot of acoustic sounds on this album as well. We heard the acoustic guitar, there was also the piano, and overall, I just, I really did adore the production on this album. I feel like you really have to appreciate classic rock music to really appreciate this album. It really doesn't sound like any other Celine Dion album. I also enjoyed her vocals on this album. I mean, she slayed a few times with her vocals on some of these tracks, and I was a little shook. Um, there were other tracks where her vocals were a bit iffy, um, but overall I enjoyed her singing on this album as well. And when it comes to the lyrics, the lyrics were hit or miss. I did like reading the lyrics most of the time, but there were other times where I just felt like the lyrics were very standard and cliche sounding Celine Dion lyrics. So the first half of the album, in my opinion, was definitely quite boring, but then I woke up and was rejuvenated with the second half. Don't get me wrong though, there were tracks from the first half that I did enjoy, like obviously Taking Chances. I also did enjoy Shadow of Love and Surprise, Surprise. So would I listen to this album again? I definitely would. There are quite a few songs on this album that I would add to my Celine Dion playlist. Now it does say here that the album received mixed reviews from critics who noted that not many chances were taken after all. So at the end of the day, I don't think that this is an amazing Celine Dion album, but I also don't think it's a bad Celine Dion album. So what did you guys think of the album? What are your favorite tracks from the album? And maybe you love this album. Maybe this is one of your favorite Celine Dion albums. Tell me why. Maybe you absolutely hate it. Again, tell me why. And maybe you went to her Taking Chances world tour. What was that like? So I think that's officially all I wanted to say on the album. And in my next Celine Dion video, we'll be wrapping up this Celine discography journey. We have finally made it to the end with her 11th studio album, Loved Me Back to Life which came out in 2013. So look out for that video next week, the grand finale of my Celine Dion discography journey, and I will see you next time. So thanks for watching, guys, and take care. Bye-bye.